Kepler XO is currently the most recent synth addition to FL Studio and is available in the All Plugins bundle. And in this video, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the synth and then show you how to actually use the synth by creating a couple of different sounds from scratch. Here's a quick listen to what we'll be making. Now in the past, I've done complete walkthroughs of various synths before actually diving in and making any individual sounds, but ImageLine has already done a full walkthrough tutorial of this plugin, which I'll be sure to leave a link in the description if you're interested. Also, I think that getting hands-on and actually making stuff is a much more effective way of learning a new synth anyway. And if you do have any specific questions, you can always hit F1 and quickly find an answer in the manual. So without further ado, Let's get straight into it. So let's start by taking a quick look at all the features of this synth. So first things first, we actually have some options up here and this is actually where we can change our theme. So you can go dark, light, colored, or two colored. Next, we have our oscillators. So this is our oscillator one and our oscillator two. They're labeled DCO1 and DCO2, which just stands for digitally controlled oscillator. Then in the middle, you have your cross mod, which is just a real frequency modulator. And then over here on the right, you have your DCO1 and two mixer. So this is actually where you can change the level of DCO1 or DCO2. You also have some noise, which is just hiss that you can incorporate and you have an amplitude modulation feature here as well. So moving down, we have our filter section. This is named VCF, which is voltage controlled filter. And then right next to that, we also have a built-in high pass filter, which is just one knob that we can mess with. Then we have our voltage controlled amplifier and we have a couple different sources. So we can choose between envelope one, gate or envelope two. Next to that, we have our envelope one and our envelope two and then we have our LFOs next to that. Down here, we have our noise controls, and then next to that, we actually have an arpeggiator, which is really cool. Then we have our modulation matrix, and then we have some effects. So we have a chorus, and then we have five other effects down here that we can potentially mess with. So let's go ahead and actually start making some sounds here. So the first thing I wanna do is make a pluck sound. So let's go up here and go to presets, and we'll just do default. So our default preset is just a sawtooth wave, like it is with many other synths. And the first thing I wanna do is go straight down to my filter section and just bring the frequency down. This is our filter cutoff. So I'll bring it about halfway and then I'll also bring up my envelope one. So this will kind of create a little bit of a plucky sound. And this is linked to our envelope one over here. So now I can adjust these in order to create more of a plucky sound. So I'm gonna bring the sustain all the way down. I can adjust the decay as well. Make it a little bit more plucky. And I could mess with the slope. I think I like it at the 24. And then I can take this down more. Let's try going back up to our oscillator and adding this pulse wave. And I can mess with the pulse wave width up here as well. And that adds a little bit of low end, so I'm just gonna use this high pass filter and take out a little bit of that low end. Sounds pretty decent so far, but let's go ahead and add a delay and a reverb. Bring this filter cutoff down. Let's mess with this time. Okay, and then I'll add some reverb. Uh, let's bring this high damping down. I like that. And let me go back to this VCA here and I'll just link this to envelope one. That sounds pretty good. I'm kind of curious what it sounds like with a chorus. I think I like it better without. All right, let's add this arpeggiator on here and see what this sounds like. I 
Okay, so that sounds pretty good for a simple pluck. Let's go ahead and make a pad sound. So we'll go back to presets, go to default, and once again, we're gonna start from scratch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go back to my filter section again. I'm basically just gonna do the same thing I did last time. I'm gonna bring this uh, to about halfway, bring envelope one to about halfway, and then this time I'm going to uh, adjust my envelope one settings a little bit differently. So again, VCA, I'm gonna put this on envelope one and I'm going to bring my attack all the way up. Let's bring this decay up a little bit as well. Uh, let me adjust the slope and bring the frequency down. I'll bring the envelope down a little bit. Let me try adding on oscillator two. I definitely like that better. Let's add a chorus as well. That sounds pretty nice. Let's add some reverb. Bring this high damping down again. And I'll bring down the high cut a little bit. Let's bring up this pre-delay. Bring up the decay. Let's add some delay on here as well. I guess the reverb kind of takes over the delay, but I like that. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Let's just mess around with the LFO just since we haven't really done anything with that yet. So I can go back into our filter section and bring up LFO one a little bit. I can turn on the rate and then I can adjust the rate here. Okay, cool. So we've made a couple of really simple sounds, but let's go ahead and get a little bit more advanced. I wanna show you how to use the modulation matrix, and then we're gonna mess with this hard sync feature, and we're gonna create kind of like a Daft Punk sounding uh, lead synth. So let's go ahead and go back into our presets, go to default. Once again, we're starting from scratch. Now this time, let's go ahead and enable our oscillator two. Let's turn this to a pulse wave and then bring the pulse wave width up. And let's go ahead and turn on hard sync. Okay, cool. So let's go to our modulation matrix. And what I wanna do is root our envelope one to our pitch uh, in our oscillator two. And because we have a hard sync enabled, it's gonna create that sort of Daft Punk lead sound. So let's go ahead and go down here, go to source, and we'll do envelope one. And then for the destination, we'll put DCO2 pitch. So let's go ahead and click that. Okay, so the way that this modulation matrix works is these knobs, when they're set to zero, it's not doing anything. But if I bring this up a little bit, it will start to do some modulation. So that's that Daft Punk sort of sound. And so if I turn hard sync off, you'll hear what that sounds like. So you can hear how it's linked to the pitch and then the hard sync gives it sort of a unique flavor. So I wanna make this sound a little bit better by rooting envelope two to the filter cutoff over here. So I'm gonna do that by going back to the modulation matrix. I'll go to envelope two and I'll route this to the filter cutoff. So now I can bring the filter cutoff down to about halfway again, uh, actually a little bit above halfway. And I wanna go here and bring this up to about, mm, I don't know, 50% or so. <laughs> And then I'm gonna adjust the decay. Okay, that's sounding a little bit better. Let's turn on some saturation here. Get a little bit of distortion going on. Okay, so I was messing with this a little bit earlier. And when you have hard sync enabled and you mess with envelope two, 
it kind of creates like an FM style sound. I really like that. And if we automate that, we can get some pretty cool kind of like 303 sounding bass sounds or acid bassy sounds. So the way that I figured out how to do this is by mapping this key follow to the envelope too. So once again, let's go to our modulation matrix. Uh, let's do key follow bipolar, and then we'll put the destination as um, envelope to DCO2. So that's our envelope to DCO2 right here. So now if I set an automation clip to this, can kind of get some more harmonics out of that and it sounds pretty cool. Now another thing we can do is experiment with the chorus effect. I actually kind of really like that. So let's leave that on for now. So let me go ahead and create a little melody so I can show you this automation that I'm talking about. Okay, so I created this goofy little melody here. Let's go ahead and automate this here. So I'm gonna create an automation clip and I'm gonna bring this all the way down like that. And let's take a listen to how that sounds. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we can also automate this one here as well and get even more harmonics. So this one, if we do too much, it'll get too crazy. So I'm just gonna put it up, up just a tiny bit. That's almost too much as is. But anyway, you get the idea. Now, while playing around with these synths can be a lot of fun, if you don't have a good fundamental understanding of synthesis and sound design, you're definitely gonna struggle a lot more with trying to create sounds from scratch like I just did. So if you don't know the fundamentals, you should definitely check out the video on the screen now, which will teach you all the basics about how to use practically any synth. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.